All right, so we're back uh, working with this GMAT online whiteboard. Uh, we're going to kill two birds with one stone. We're going to do a uh, GMAT question explanation, and we're going to do it using the online whiteboard so you can get a sense for how you might solve these things. We have another video where we go in depth on the whiteboard suggesting how to use it, um, and we're going to do a bunch of these explanations to kind of give some examples. So let's get started with this one. Because it's got exponents, I would probably use the, um, the pencil. I would avoid uh, keyboard. Even though I like keyboard for inputting math uh, with the whiteboard, I, uh, when there are exponents or other symbols that you can't easily um, make happen with the keyboard, I think you're much better off using the pen. So for this one, uh, because you've got this like 99999, you've got this like non-integer that's just missing a little piece, um, I would do this technique where you do this one minus thing. So it's this number is one minus, and then that little bit missing at the end, which is like dot seven zeros and then a one. So one eight spaces back, which is the same as 10 to the negative eighth. That's the same as, as that um, dot nine 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 number. And then you can kind of do the same thing down here, but from the, a different direction. You want to add that, that piece. So you, you want to create an integer, one, and then you're going to add the bit that um, is extra. And in this case, it's uh, a one four places out, so 10 to the negative four. And you should be really comfortable with exponents um, especially powers of 10, because they come up all over on the test. The second fraction, a little more challenging, but really the same thing. For the top one, you just got to think about what you're missing there at the end. And um, because it's a one, right, you need to think about, well, what would I subtract from some number in order to create a one at the end? And uh, you want to think about if you had zeros at the end, what creates a one? And uh, it would be a nine, right? Because you would end up borrowing, and you'd end up essentially with a 10 at the end, and then 10 minus a nine is one. If there were two at the end, you'd want to subtract an eight. If there were three at the end, you'd want to subtract a seven. Once you get the hang of this, it's, it's pretty simple. I know it probably looks a little strange if you haven't done this before. But uh, these questions are really easy to spot because you always have these like nine 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 or one point oh one, uh, and then the follow through is actually also not that challenging once you've done it a couple times. So we want a nine eight places out. So do nine, and then we're going to shuttle it out there using a power of ten because we want it to be ten. Uh, sorry, eight spaces out. It's ten to the negative eighth. And then on the bottom, we're going to do the same thing that we did there on the left. But this time we need a three. That's all. That's the only difference. Good. So that's kind of the hard part. Now we just need to do really basic stuff that we would always do, things that we're always looking for. And because I see a one and I see an even power, I'm thinking difference of squares, right? Whenever you see a perfect squares and you and it's a difference, it's a subtraction, be thinking difference of squares. And uh, we say around here that difference of squares is innocent till proven guilty, meaning you should pretty much always do it unless you've got a really good reason not to. Difference of squares almost always makes things uh, faster or simplifies something or is like the key inference that sort of breaks open a question. And you can see here we already have a nice cancellation. This one and this one are gone. We also had differences squares over here, kind of working in the same way. Remember that the coefficient 9, you also have to take the, the root of that, so that becomes a 3. And notice that, like, I'm working with this online whiteboard. I'm also talking and explaining stuff. 
And it's it's not that bad. See, I just made a mistake, but that's okay because I can just undo it. It's not that bad. And that's gone, and that's gone. And we just got to be careful with that negative sign. It has to be distributed there. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's bring together like terms. Our ones are going to cancel, so they're gone. And then it might be easier for you to rearrange things so that you've got the negative sign in the middle. You don't have to. Maybe it's really obvious to you like how these things come together, but I think this is like the really easy way to see it, that you've got like terms. They're, they're both 10 to the negative 4s. And here you have three of them, and here essentially you've got really one of them. The coefficient there is one. So you're just doing three minus one because you can subtract like terms. You don't have to factor these. You could factor out 10 to the negative four and then have 10 to the negative four on the outside, three minus one, and it'd be two. But I think the better GMAT workflow is to recognize like terms and add or subtract them. Tough GMAT question, but I love seeing these because one, they're easy to spot. This point nine 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 thing, one point oh oh one two three, whatever, easy to see what type of question it is. And then the follow through is very formulaic. You're almost always doing this one minus or one plus um, power of ten thing. With that, I would keep in mind difference of squares. If you're ever getting stuck on an exponents question, consider whether you can do difference of squares. Remember that 1 is a perfect square, so if you have 1 minus some exponent, it's not unlikely that you can do difference of squares. Also consider that any even exponent is a perfect square, so like 10 to the negative 8 or 10 to the negative 6, um, all perfect squares. So those are signals for doing difference of squares. The online whiteboard is a little clunky. I think the math comes out looking a little sloppier. But I didn't feel at all disadvantaged uh, working through this question using the whiteboard. I would say um, I'm writing a little bigger and I'm using a little bit more space than I normal normally would. So I would encourage you to do the same. You do have an unlimited canvas, so I would uh, take advantage of all that space. I do think your success with the online whiteboard will depend a bit on, on your workflow, like how you're working through GMAT questions. So if you're tending to do a careful setup, and a thoughtful follow-through, if you're really figuring out what the question is about and applying the right tools, I think you're going to find that with a little practice, the online whiteboard is, is pretty seamless, and you're going to be able to work through things at the speed at which you're thinking. If you're tending to brute force, if you're tending to kind of like jump into the execution and you're, you're doing a lot of algebra, throwing a lot of mud at the wall and kind of seeing what sticks, I think you're going to have a more challenging uh, time working that way with the online whiteboard. I would encourage you to check out our uh, GMAT online whiteboard blog post because it has a bunch of advice on what tools to use for what content. And I do think that you need to practice with this thing to get a sense uh, for the workflow that is best for you. All right, so that's it for this video, but we're going to be coming out with more GMAT Online Whiteboard content in the next days to help guide you through this process. Comment with any questions. Comment with your experiences. We'd love to hear from you whether you, you love this online whiteboard or whether you're struggling with it. And uh, let us know how you're doing with it so we can tailor our content to help you through this process. So good luck with your GMAT studying. Good luck with your GMAT. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.